In the middle of the night on March 31st, 1922, on a secluded farm in Germany, an entire family was brutally murdered by something that they couldn't see. In the days and months leading up to their death, the family had been complaining to friends and neighbors about really strange and creepy things that had been happening around their farm that they couldn't explain. The police conducted extensive investigations but were unable to uncover the truth. And to this day, no one knows who or what murdered the family. The Gruber family lived on a rural farm about 40 miles north of Munich in Germany, and it was called Hinterkaifeck. The family consisted of 63-year-old Andreas, his 72-year-old wife, Kazilia, their 35-year-old daughter, Victoria, who was a widow, and Victoria's two young children, seven-year-old Kazilia, who was named after her grandma, and two-year-old Yosef. The family really kept to themselves, and they were not really well-liked in the surrounding communities. They had a pretty scandalous reputation, and there were rumors floating around that Andreas and Victoria had an incestuous relationship which resulted in her two-year-old son, Yosef. That is a crime, as it should be. And Andreas and Victoria actually spent time in jail because of it. So because of all of the allegations and the time spent in jail, it really caused the Grubers to hide away on Hinterkaifeck and really not go out or come into the other communities unless it was really needed. So it wouldn't be alarming for friends and neighbors to not see them for days at a time. In September of 1921, the Grubers live in maid at the time just up and quit. And she would later tell people that she was convinced that the house was haunted because she would hear strange noises from the walls and footsteps up in the attic, and there was never anybody there. She would also hear these tapping and knocking noises all around the house, and she could never find the source. And she would later go on to tell police during the investigation that she heard all of these crazy, strange things, like the footsteps in the attic and the tapping and knocking that she could never find a source for, and even seeing the door to the attic open and close by itself every night at midnight. She did tell the Grubers what she was hearing, but they didn't believe her. But after she left, the Grubers did start hearing those noises. And Andreas would go on to tell his neighbors that he would hear somebody walking up in the attic and immediately rush up the stairs, but there would never be anybody there and nothing was out of place. And the neighbors were really concerned for the Grubers. They did offer them help. And at one point they offered them a gun and Andreas said no. He just wanted to try to get on with life at the farm as usual. So six months later in March, a huge blizzard would roll through the area, just blanketing it in a fresh pile of snow. So after the storm subsided, Andreas went out to kind of check the property to see if there had been any damage. And as he makes it to the edge of his property out by the forest, he makes a horrifying discovery. Andreas can see a set of footprints in the fresh snow leading from the forest up to the farmhouse. So he follows the footprints all the way from the forest to the back door of the farmhouse. And that's where he makes another horrifying discovery. There aren't any footprints leaving the house. Whoever went into the house is still there. So Andreas searches everywhere in the house. He searches the attic, he searches the rooms, he searches everywhere. He even questions the family. Did you guys go outside? Did anybody walk in from outside recently? Uh, telling them, we, we need to find who's in here. There's somebody in the house. But everybody in the family was like, no, we, we haven't been outside. We, it's not us, man, it wasn't us. And over the next couple of days, again, the Grubers are telling their friends and families about all these strange things that are happening. And now the footprints. Another strange thing that happened was they found a random newspaper in the house that wasn't a newspaper they subscribed to. In fact, none of them had ever seen it before, but it was just laying on the kitchen table. And they also had a set of keys to the farm just go completely missing. They had no idea where they went. And the part of this story that just strikes me as the craziest is remember what I said earlier, the Grubers never left their farm or hardly ever left their farm. And when they did, it was usually just Kazelia and Victoria that went out to the store to get something and come back. So there was usually always somebody there. Why couldn't they find anybody? Why couldn't they find a source to this craziness? So anyway, the Grubers were officially freaked out now. And even though the Grubers did tell their neighbors about all this crazy stuff that was going on, they never reported it to police. They didn't want anything to do with the police, especially after all the rumors and spending time in jail. They didn't want to have any conversations with the police, so they never reported it. At some point during all of this, the Grubers had hired a new live-in maid. Her name was Maria, and she was slated to start at the end of March. And Maria was actually dropped off by her sister on March 31st at Hinterkaifeck, and uh, they had the opportunity to meet and talk with the Grubers before her sister left. And that was the last time anyone would see them alive. On April 4th, a repairman came to Hinterkaifeck to repair a piece of machinery that Andreas had asked him to earlier. And as he's walking up to the house, he notices the farm is pretty quiet. And he gets up to the door and he knocks and nobody answers. The door was locked, but he could hear the family dog inside barking. So he just assumed they were out. And then he went to work on fixing that piece of machinery. Several hours after he completed what he was doing, the repairman came out of the barn and he noticed that the Gruber's family dog was now outside tied to a post. So he assumed, oh, they're home. I'm gonna go let Andreas know I'm done. So then he goes back up to the house and notices that the door is slightly open. So he knocks again and calls out for them, but there's no answer. 
And even though there's nothing that seems wrong, he's just genuinely freaked out by this situation. So the repairman goes back to town to meet up with one of his friends, who happens to be a neighbor of the Grubers. And he lets him know about this strange day he had out there and all the things that were going on, and then letting him know that he feels like something is wrong. So the neighbor says, yeah, you know, come to think of it, I actually haven't seen the Grubers for a couple of days and uh, we should probably go check on them. So they round up a third person and all three of the men jump in a vehicle and head out to the Grubers farm to check it out and see if they can find them. And when they pull up onto the farmstead again, it looks just very quiet and there's nobody out working and they can't see any sign of the Grubers anywhere. So they get out of the vehicle and they start walking up to the house and they can see that the door is now again shut. And when they go check it, it's locked again. And so they're kind of looking around going, what is going on? And as they're kind of scanning around the farm, they can see that one of the barn doors is open and not to the barn that the repair guy was in, to a different barn. So the three men head over and what they discover in that barn is the stuff of nightmares. As they entered the barn, they immediately knew that something very horrific had happened to the Grubers. Over in the corner, stacked on top of each other one by one, were the bodies of Andreas, Kazalia, Victoria, and Victoria's seven-year-old daughter, Kazelia. The men alerted the police who came out to investigate the rest of the property. And when they eventually got in the house, they quickly realized that two-year-old Yosef and Maria were both dead in Yosef's room. So during the investigation and the autopsies, it was determined with some degree of certainty that at some point during the night on March 31st, each member of the Gruber family, minus Maria and Yosef, were led one by one out to the barn where they were then bludgeoned to death with a type of pickaxe called a mattock. And after whoever was done with the ones in the barn, they went inside and finished Maria and Yosef in the same manner. Police were never able to find any real solid evidence or any real solid leads for anybody that could have done this. And as they conducted their investigations, they would hear these strange stories from neighbors about what had happened in the four days after the family had died. So from March 31st to April 4th when they were found, some really strange shit was going down. The neighbors had said they had saw a man who they thought was Andreas wandering around the outside of the house. They had also seen uh, on several nights smoke coming out of the chimney as somebody was inside and had lit a fire. The police also determined during their investigation that whoever had done this had cooked and ate food at the Gruber's house and uh, they even maintained their farming operation for four days. And the really creepy part is they determined that whoever had done it was probably there up until the repairman came. Because remember when the repairman came the dog was in the house. And when he left, the dog was outside tied up. So whoever had done this was still in the house the day the police came. There are a few theories of what could have happened to the Grubers, but police have yet to find a solid answer to who or what murdered this family.